गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द क्लास ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर माई सेल्फ इज वीरेंद्र वर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट गर्ल्स कॉलेज राजसमंद टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ए पोएम नेम्ड द क्लाउड रिटर्न बाई पी बी सैली This poem is prescribed for BA part first students. This is a major poem written by P. B. Sally. The cloud. This poem was written during late eighteen nineteen or early eighteen twenty. The work was published in the eighteen twenty collection, and the name of that collection was Prometheus Unbound, a lyrical drama, in four acts, with other poems. It was published in London in August eighteen twenty. the poem consist the poem consist of uh, six stanzas in anapestic or antidactylous meter in this kind of meter we have a foot with uh, two unaccented syllables followed by an accented syllable The cloud is one of the famous poems of Sally. Sally personifies the cloud. In other words, we can say he gives it life and a personality. Furthermore, the poet makes the cloud tell its own life story so that the poem becomes an autobiography of the cloud sally conceives of the cloud as a separate living entity his capacity to give a separate and independent life to the various objects of nature and the forces of nature is known as sally's myth making power this poem shows sally's high imaginative power it is wonderful how sally describes natural and scientific facts in terms of imagination and fancy now we will move towards to our text here is the text on your screen the cloud by percy b c sally his full name i think you all know he was a very famous romantic poet here the poem begins i bring fresh showers for the thirsting flowers from the seas and the streams i bear light said for the leaves when laid in their noonday dreams from my wings are shaken the dews that waken the sweet birds every one when rocked to rest on their mother's breast 
As she dances about the sun, I wield the flail of the lashing hail and whiten the green plains under, and then again I dissolve it in rain, and I laugh as I pass in thunder. This is the first stanza of this poem. In this stanza, the cloud himself is telling about his life, how he comes to life and what does he do. The cloud bring rain to refresh the fading flowers. It brings this rain from ocean and rivers. The cloud casts sad over the leaves at noon time when they seem to be asleep and dreaming. Drops of water fall from the cloud to awaken the sleeping birds which had gone to sleep on their mother's breast. The cloud flings, flings means throws, the cloud flings below on the earth the hailstones which make the green fields look white. The loud sound of thunder is the laughter of the cloud. So, in these lines, our speaker or our, the, our poet served several activities of the cloud in a series of pictures. Now we will move towards to our stanza number second. I shift the snow on the mountains below and their great pines grown aghast and all the night it is my pillow white while I sleep in the arms of the blast sublime on the towers of my sky bowers lightening my pilot seats in a cavern under is fettered the thunder it struggles and howls at fits over earth and ocean with gentle motion this pilot is guiding me, lured by the love of the genie that move in the depths of the purple sea, over the rills and the crags and the hills, over the lakes and the plains, wherever he dream, under mountain or stream, the spirit he loves remains, and I all the while bask in heaven's blue smile whilst he is dissolving in rains. <coughs> Here in this second stanza, our poet says through the mouth of cloud that snowflakes fall from the cloud on mountains below <clears throat> when the great pine trees growing on mountains are hit by snowflakes they are painfully surprised the snow covered top the snow covered top of a mountain serves as a white pillow for guides the cloud in the arms of a storm. Lightning sits the pilot that guides the cloud in the courses of its journey. 
lightning sits on the high towers of the aerial dwelling of the cloud thunder is chained below it the thunder struggles for its release and its howls are heard at intervals lightning which is a pilot for the cloud guides it gently over earth and ocean <coughs> lightning is in love with the, the spirits who dwell in the depth of the ocean whom our poet has called jini urged by that love lightning flashes over streams and rocks over hills and lakes and over plains all this time the cloud enjoys the warmth of the blue sky in these lines some more pictures of nature are given by the poet natural phenomena are depicted in a fanciful manner in this stanza now we will move towards to our third stanza the sanguine sunrise with his meteor eyes and his burning plums outspread leaps on the back of my sailing wreck when the morning star shines dead <coughs> as on the jag of a mountain crag which an earthquake rocks and swings an eagle alight one moment may sit in the light of its golden wings and when sunset may breathe from the lit sea beneath its ardors of rest and of love and the crimson pall of eve may fall from the depth of heaven above with wings folded i rest on my airy nest as still as a brooding dove in this third stanza the poet says through the mouth of cloud that in the morning the sun climbs up the sky riding on the back of the cloud it seems as if a bright winged eagle had seated itself just for a moment on the edge of a rock at sunset when all things take rest and the crimson colors of the evening descend upon all things the cloud stops its journey and becomes motionless like a dove which sits with its wings folded and appears to be lost in meditation we get some more natural pictures in these lines indeed we feel overwhelmed by the abundance and richness of natural imagery and by the imaginative interpretation of natural phenomena in this stanza the rest part of this poem will be discussed in some other video till then goodbye